So I was just walking back from the park making a video on microclimate and I saw another opportunity to make one. There's this crazy microclimate in the park right behind my house. Um, you'll see with this tree, the melted patch to the south of the tree is far larger than the melted patch to the north. Now this can be either a product of wind snow harvesting, so maybe the snow accumulated more on the north side than it did on the south, but my suspicion is that the tree is actually creating a microclimate. So there's two things going on here in my opinion. Number one is this is the south behind me. So the tree is facing to the north. And so a lot of people don't realize this. It's a really, really important fact with regards to how frost and cold move through an ecosystem. Space, that stuff above me, is really cold. In fact, it's minus 273 degrees Celsius or minus, or sorry, zero degrees Kelvin. I don't know what it is in Rankin or Fahrenheit, but it's really, really cold. And so radiation, which is um, energy that moves through a wave form as opposed to conduction or convection, and convection is really just a form of conduction. Convection happens when two particles hit each other and uh, and so there really is only two modes of heat transfer, but we'll we'll call it three just because that's what everybody's used to. Um, so radiation <clears throat> always moves from a place of high energy intensity to low energy intensity. So space is theoretically the lowest energy intensity system that we know of because it's what we call absolute zero or very close to absolute zero. And so even though we live on a warm planet with a protected atmosphere, um, radiation moves through both vacuum and through media, like oxygen or air. And it moves faster in space than it does on the planet. However, um, even if this tree is minus 10 Celsius or minus 40 Celsius, it's still scorching hot compared to space. And so what happens with the south part of this tree is that the tree actually prevents this ground on the south side of the tree from seeing minus 273 degrees Fahrenheit, or Celsius, sorry all these units, I can't keep it all straight in my head. So what happens is as this tree basically takes the brunt of space, which is sucking energy out, so the north side of the tree will always be colder than the south side because this tree has to um, take all of that northern sky at night. Um, and then it doesn't receive the sunlight during the day. So what the tree does is it actually sets up a microclimate. And this microclimate right here would be a perfect place to grow things like tomatoes or any heat loving plant that's gonna to wanna to stay warmer at night. And again, because we have the snow here, we can see some incredible patterns that normally are not available for us to see during the summertime. So if you live in a cold climate with lots of snow and you're just in the melt like we are, start going out and seeing if you can notice some patterns. And make sure that you're observing more than one scenario so that you can tell whether or not your pattern is actually something that's real and observable and actually happening. So here's another tree, south side is all melted. Or if it's just happenstance, it's very important to create a hypothesis and then test it. Okay, so here's another tree. And what's really interesting is that we've got these deciduous trees right here. Okay, so there's no canopy on them right now. And look at the south side of theirs. There's no considerable melting going on. So we can clearly see that this tree is having an effect on the south portion of it. And it could end up meaning an additional month of growing on each side of the growing season. Now, the other microclimate that could be occurring here is that this tree is relatively dark. It's, it's not super dark, but it's darker than the snow. And so trees or dark surfaces, whether they're trees or houses, siding, are going to set up microclimates by just affecting or having a different albedo. And an albedo is basically the amount of solar radiation that a surface absorbs. And it's a function of its color. So snow reflects almost everything. That's why when you're outside in the snowy day or in an environment with lots of snow and it's really sunny, the snow is going to cause a lot of reflection. It can sunburn you, it can hurt your eyes. You gotta be careful with it. Whereas a black surface or a dark surface like a spruce tree is gonna 
really ab absorb a lot of that energy. So hopefully you found that interesting. If there's any other videos you guys are interested in learning or knowing about, specifically around permaculture and design, put it in the comments below. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys in a future video. And uh, if you haven't hit the like button, please do that. And if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Okay, have a great day. Talk to you soon.